Hi, welcome back to ODE YouTube channel. My name is Paulo and I'm here again for another Friday Night Pen Thoughts. And today it is episode number 19. And today it is Lisboa, 24 de setembro de 2021. And so, thank you so much for coming again. I'll try to edit the video and make it available, but there's no need to say this because if you are hearing me now, it's because I was able to record it and to edit, render it, upload it, and so on. So, I hope you are all well. Um, I think today I have some topics that I think they are maybe interesting, at least for me, and I would like, and this video may become a little long, as usual, and let's start by showing you the first topic that I'm talking about today, and I always do that, is the pens for today. I will write these down just to be sure I remember what I am talking about and then to put the timestamps for the part of the video. If you are one of those people that don't want to watch the whole video with me just talking a lot. So, this is the, the pen that I'm using for uh, today are this pen and this is a Caveco Art Sport Amber. And as you may see, this is a Caveco Art Sport from Generation 2. You can see there Caveco Art Sport. This is the amber color. It is very, very um, sought after. And I would say this is really one of the rarest Caveco Sport pens that you may want to get. I have only seen a few. Um, I have only one. I only had one ever, but I know some collectors that have, but there are not that many at least that I know of. It is a nice pen that is made of a resin with this kind of cracked ice uh, finish, which is really kind of a, an amber finish. When you uncap the pen, this one has, not a nib it came with, but the new premium nib that Caveco sent me. So this one has a medium, premium, steel nib. And the ink it has inside is Caveco Caramel Brown, which is a nice color, I think. The next pen I have for this video is my new Monte Grappa that I bought recently and I already showed you and this is a beautiful pen. So this is the Monte Grappa Mia Cityscape for Corsani. With Corsani is a store in Rome, Italy. And this one has a fine steel nib. Let me show it to you. The typical Monte Grappa nib with that filigree pattern. And inside it has Leonardo Officina Italiana purple, which is a very nice shade of purple. And these, if you have these in a wetter and broader nib, 
you will see that this in, in the in the good paper this ink will provide some sheen as you can see on the feet there is sheen visible there so this is a very beautiful pen if we put them together you will see that there are two very different although nice materials now next topic i want to talk about most of those topics are repeated from friday night pen thoughts to friday night pen thoughts is previous videos here on the channel so my previous videos were a long video of pens for september this month this video came a little late it should be on the beginning of the month but given that i didn't ever even made this video for the previous month so i guess it was good enough just to be able to record the video and post it uh, the, in this video i show all the pens that i have with ink for that particular month in this case september i posted three reviews and these reviews were about three pens one was the scribo piuma utopia that i don't know i no longer have i sent it back to apple boom because it was alone beautiful amazing pen the other one was a Lamy Ion. This is in my collection. It is a pen that I like a lot. It's very beautiful. I like the design and I love the color. I really, really like this dark green color. And the other one was a review that was recorded long time ago, which was the review of this pen. This is the Caveco Sport Black Crystal. This is an interesting pen. I got some months ago i recorded the review and i kept it and now i published it so i guess now i don't have any older reviews in stock to publish when i need so i need i, I think i need to build up some stock of already recorded videos so it becomes a little easier to deal with the rhythm of the channel and september is a month where i don't really like to slow down a lot i really like to keep the the rhythm so let's see what i can do if i don't if i can't keep up with the rhythm i will slow down this this is just a pen channel not my life i i have to deal with this stuff so one pens for september three reviews and two unboxing videos and these will take us to the next item and the next item is pens I received since last Friday night pen thoughts and there were Two pens only not there are there are sometimes there are more so it was the Montegrappa Mia Cityscape and also this one as I showed you and this pen when you look at it it comes to my collection to join the one that i already had the mia meteor shower which is a beautiful uh, pattern it has more contrast so you may think it is nicer because of that but that one has also very nice color variation the cityscape this one has a medium nib because i think montegrappa nibs are quite good in medium this time I decided to go for a fine and I'm also happy with it. If I had to choose, I'm not sure. I think I'm happy for having both uh, possibilities of using both pens. The other pen 
that I got was this little thing from Caveco and this is a Caveco Lilliput made of steel. I didn't have any. So I already had a similar Caveco, not made of steel, but the silver Lilliput. And the silver Lilliput is not actually silver. It is a aluminium pen. It's so much lighter than the steel one. So it will be fun. I will think I will review them, compare them and compare also this one with the Supra because I think it will be an interesting uh, versus video. Also, besides this, I uh, also received the new Caveco Premium Nibs. The, this box doesn't have it inside because it is in this pen. And this one has the other nib here in this little tin. And when you look at the nib, you can see like the in the gold version, this nib has a different design. It has like rays going from the, those lines going from the logo on the middle. So these, I will test them. I have some pens inked, it, inked with it, so it will be fine. So pens I received, Monte Grappa Mia Cityscape and Caveco Lilliput Steel. Now, next videos. This is something that I always struggle a little bit because I don't want to promise things that I may not be able to deliver until next Friday Night Pen Thoughts, but I guess you can understand if I don't deliver them. So next videos, stuff that I am planning. So I'm planning a, an ink review. I'm planning to review the an ink called Great Fountain from Italy, Mystery Brown, which is a kind of uh, orangey brown. Maybe it's quite good for these Octo these not October, this autumn season. And let me just it I have here a Lamy CP1 the model 50 in brushed steel with an oblique nib and I just wanted to show you the color of the ink. It looks more brown in this paper than in others. This is the Muji paper but I just wanted to show it to you. I wonder how well well it didn't deal well didn't go bad with this paper so quite nice. Okay the review of this ink will come soon, I hope. And also, I will make a review of the Caveco Premium Nibs, because I think this is uh, something that is important that I received from Caveco and there are a lot of people interested in that. Caveco Premium Nibs. So, Premium Nibs are nibs that I showed you how they look. They are made to, they, they, they are, as I think, they are uh, hand adjusted, they are, uh, they have a special grind, uh, a special smoothing to be better, to have a better experience, like more expensive nibs. And they are more expensive than the regular nibs that are available. So I want to make these uh, tests. I always have lots of I have lots of Cavecos. I don't have complaints about Caveco, but there are lots of complaints about Caveco nibs online. So uh, I think to address that, Caveco decided to make a different nib, more carefully uh, adjusted. But and I will try the, that. So I think that so far, I think this nib is pretty smooth. If you ask me, did I need um, a nib this smooth? No, I don't need. But I know many people that do need them. So for that, that um, video, I will use three Caveco Art Sport pens to be more kind of comparable. 
and this one uh, and I'll explain that why. So I, I, I will use this Art Sport Amber. I will use the Art Sport Tiger Eye. That one has the premium medium nib. This one has a regular medium nib. And this is, for me, this is fine enough. This is good enough, but that one is wetter. Uh, not wetter, it's smoother. But for me, there's no big deal about that. And I have this beautiful, isn't it? This Mambo, Art Sport Mambo from Generation 1. And this Art Sport Mambo has a gold medium nib. And why did I choose to use these Art Sports? Because this Caveco Art Sport Mambo is the only Caveco Sport pen that I have with a medium gold nib. So I had to use something that would be comparable. And I could not exchange this nib for a mo in a, to a modern Caveco Sport because this generation one Caveco Art Sports are not interchangeable with the others. So I could not change the nib. Um, and the other, the modern gold, the modern gold nib that I have is a broad nib. So it wouldn't be a fair comparison. I decided to go M with M with M. So the only way I could do it was in this combination. And even this, I even here I have a problem, which is the this nib is a vintage nib. Um, not the vintage, it is an older version of the nib. The regular version is a little different. Just let me show you. Here we have the Kavec student, the new color. This is the 30s blues. This, this has a gold broad nib. And you will see that the design is not exactly the same. 14 karat gold nib. They are a little different in their designs. The, the kind of engraving and even the M in this one is kind of in cursive and in that one it is in block letters. So this is, this is how it will be. If I have a medium gold nib, uh, uh, a modern one, I would do that. So let me just show you again these very nice material and let's go on. So now we will go to, let me check my notes. Yes, I have lots of notes in this, in the other page, in the left page of the, of the notebook. Uh, what I want to, to talk about is the uncommon pen of the day. And the uncommon pen of the day will be a Pilot Vortex Green. And let me show you the Pilot. So, the pen I'm talking about is this thing. This is a very interesting kind of futuristic thing that reminds uh, some, sp some space cartoon object or a spaceship, I'm not sure. The shape of the, the clip that says vortex there, the green dome on the top, the completely transparent plastic, then this gray plastic again and the gray end to it. It says pilot here, it says made in Japan there. And it is an interesting pen. And why? Do I say it is an interesting pen? Because to me, it reminds me of a Japanese pocket pen, like the Pilot Elite 95S. So when you compare them, you see that the Vortex is just a little bit longer, but it is a nice pen indeed. So let me show you what I think about it. The first thing that let's forget about the materials and being transparent and so on, but 
the, the biggest thing that makes a, a cut from the construction of this pen to the construction of this one is the way it is kept because this one has a screw cap like this and this one is just this very satisfying uh, slip cap when you look at both pens together you will see that the vortex is again just a little bit longer the nib is much smaller and on the Elite 95S you have a gold nib, one of those inlaid gold nib and this you have just a kind of a semi-hooded nib that looks a little similar to the nib on, um, on a Lamy Safari or a mix between a Lamy Safari and a Pilot Kaplas so it is quite fun there is another big difference which is the, the material, here it is a plastic and here you have a rubberized section which is also nice and it has these kind of ribs that give you a nice grip not that you need to have a nice grip but it does and it is fine I don't think this is the major difference I would say the major difference is the screw cap then you can see both pens are quite short but you can write with a vortex and I think you can also write with a Elite 95S however the Elite 95S is just a little bit shorter not much but it looks much much shorter and why because on the elite you cannot hold the pen like there like that because you have ink in your fingers because the nib will is a little long when you look at this one the nib is small and this hooded and you can hold the pen like this if you want so the pen looks longer because it gives you more places to hold it but because they are pocket pens they are made to be posted so you can post the elite let's align things and it will become a very long pen and you can post the vortex again the strange thing is that this clicks on place it makes noise this one doesn't it's just a slip cap and uh, in this case it just clicks and it is kind of, kind of strange because if you are used to this pen and you just do like this to cap it then you, your mind will tell you just to force it because it will click on place but it doesn't, it, you need to screw it so this is a kind of a design aspect that I would say it's not that fine so you have them like this and you'll see that again they are very similar in size one big difference about this one is that it takes pilot converters or cartridges the vortex there are two editions as far as I could understand it will not it takes only short international cartridges which is nice but I I understood there was a, an edition for Europe and an edition for Japan one takes international cartridges and the other one will take uh, pilot cartridges and this is nice to know just a feature that is always very interesting and I'm I think this is a nice pen I can't really date this pen I would say it is from around the year 2000, I'm not sure, I can't find any information about it I think it is quite a nice pen this one is not a school pen and it is expensive this was quite cheap, made of plastic, steel nib and it is a good school pen, I would say but also a very good everyday writer pen if you like the shape because this is just a pilot pen and pilots, pilot pens are good with the steel or gold nibs or whatever so I think this is a strange looking pen it's not easy to find not even on eBay there aren't many but I decided it would be a very interesting pen to show as the uncommon pen of the day I'm not saying it is rare or very valuable I'm just saying this is not that usual to see 
And now let's go for the two final topics for this video. Maybe it will not get that long after all. <laughs> let's let's see. You better not to promise. So let's pick again the Monte Grappa and write what I want to talk about is which oh, sorry style of not nib of clip do you prefer and I will give you options I will not write them all here because it will be long but you can reply on the on the comments I will just say like this even on the description but there are some different options I have been thinking about it and I think that's an interesting thing so let's start I think there are several kinds of pens there are pens like these beautiful Gravitas stainless steel skull edition with the skulls there looking very angry um, these skulls uh, these angry skulls. I'm not sure if they're angry or they're just laughing. Skulls can be quite inexpressive. Uh, this pen from Gravitas from Ireland. By the way, I'm expecting a Gravitas pilot. I think the shippings are a little bit delayed, but I really want to get that. Um, that pen, uh, this pen doesn't have a clip. So this is one of the options. Which style of clip do you prefer? A pen with no clip or a pen with no clip but with an optional one. I have here a Caveco Brass Sport that doesn't come with a clip, as you know, but you can get the clip and get it installed there. So it is really optional to you. You prefer clip or you don't. So this is an optional pen, an optional clip pen. So this is also a interesting option. The other option that I will talk about is this one. The classic, the regular kind of clip, which is a clip that is flexible enough and it is very regular, like this. It is on the cap, through a cap ring there and it just works. This is a Pelican M 800 beautiful pen with a beautiful nib or do you prefer this is another version a pen like many Italian pens like the Monte Grappa Monte Grappa I'm not uh, duplicating things it's really called Monte Grappa Monte Grappa this is the Monte Grappa Coral this is a very beautiful pen that has the typical, let me show you the nib, it's the same nib on the, that you find on the Mia. But this is a piston filler that makes this nice noise. This pen has this clip and these clips usually are really stiff, you can't almost move them. But they have this little wheel on the tip and this wheel will allow you to put the clip over the fabric of your shirt or whatever, wherever you are using your pen. So this is a, an interesting and different way. The, the way you use the clip is not uh, with the flexibility of the clip, but with the flex with the the way the the wheel will the wheel will uh, help you to slide the fabric beneath or the clip over the fabric then there is also another type of clip that is the spring loaded type 1 let's call it like that like the Lamy Lamy 2000 this is Lamy 2000 still it's now an inked but very interesting pen you have this clip that you when you are putting it over something you just do it and you press it here and it lifts very easily and it is easy to operate there is another kind of spring-loaded clip 
which is this kind. This is a beautiful pen. This is the Grafon Faber Castell Intuition. Very beautiful with no section. It's a very interesting pen. In this pen, the clip, you can also do that, but you have to press it really hard. But it has a spring loaded clip that works on a hinge there. But you have to use it with your finger on the bottom. Not like this, that you just press the top and it opens and you slide it. In this case, it slides well over the fabric because it has this uh, slope. But if you want to be sure you can use it better, you just lift it with your fingers and it is very, very springy. So spring loaded clips, two kinds are also an option. And so I want to ask you what is your opinion about clips? Which kind of clip do you like? No clip at all or one that I would say people may like this pen but I would say many people don't would not like the clip, the style of clip. This one, this is the Pilot, the not sorry not Pilot, this is the Platinum Preppy and the Platinum Preppy has another style of clip which is the plastic clip that will eventually break because it's not flexible enough. So I don't think this is the kind of clip you're looking for, but maybe someone prefers it. I, I would say that many people love this pen and I understand that. I just don't think this is the best clip design to have a plastic clip. So, what, but even if you prefer this, please let me know. Let me know what you think because I'm really interested in this discussion. I, you have here several options and I think all of them are kind of interesting. So, let, let's now remove these pens from the notebook and let's go for the last topic. And last topic will be about... This is an interesting topic and I will explain that to you. For how long... This nib is really, really smooth. Really, really, like glass smooth. Um, for how long should we expect? Sometimes it skips, but it's not the nib's fault. I'm just trying not to, almost not to touch the paper, because if I press it a little harder, this nib will put maybe too much ink for this paper. Uh, for how long should we expect a pen to be in perfect condition? And this is kind of a strange question and we can say forever, but Let's just follow my thought. Let's just, I, I will explain what, how this thought came to me. So, I was cleaning this pen some time ago, since a very long time, always using it. This is the Leonardo Officina, very beautiful pen. Why don't you focus? It has a beautiful material. It has the engraving there saying, and I can't show you the engraving, why? Leonardo, there in the serial number. This Leonardo Ficina Italiana, Momento Zero Grande, and this is the Dark Hawaii. I have this pen for maybe about two years or a little longer. And this pen has been almost always inked and almost always inked with the same ink, which was Leonardo Turchese. Hawaii Turquoise or Turquoise Hawaii. It is a, a dark turquoise color from Leonardo. So this is, you can see this is an older pen because it is the old style that has this kind of uh, piston which needs you to remove the barrel to fill it or to remove just this blind cap. It's not the, that kind of regular piston type. And when I cleaned this pen, I was looking at it 
closely with a loop and if you look at the top of the clip sorry not clip I was talking about clips and now I'm missing everything up I'm not sure if I can show it to you but you can see it starts losing some plating and I message Mr. Salvatore Matrone from Leonardo and told him you know my Leonardo Momento Zero Grande, Dark Hawaii, is starting to lose the plating on the nib. And he told me, okay, no problem, I can send you a replacement nib. Okay, that's fine, it's perfect, okay. But then I started thinking, and not saying anything about the brand, I'm not destroying the brand at all, I'm just talking about what I thought. We pen people, sometimes we are very harsh, I would say. But I want to know your opinion. But my opinion is that maybe we are, we are a little harsh. So, I had this pen. I used it very regularly, if not every day, at least every week since I got it. Always inked, always writing. It writes beautifully, it is a very good pen, I like the size, I like everything about it, so no complaints at all. But now the plating started to fail on me. And my thought is, is this a pen failure? Or putting in another way, for how long should the pen be in 100% perfect condition. Okay, I know that we tend to say forever because that's how we think about things. But imagine that you buy one fancy uh, frying pan with those Teflon uh, coating and so on and you use it every day. Maybe after two years the, that uh, lining of Teflon will start failing on you, maybe sooner. So, the pen, if you use the pen like this, quiet, on a box or in display, you may want the pen to last forever. But is that fair that we want to have our knee in completely perfect condition, even if we use it in a regular way for a long time? If you use a pen as a tool, it is natural that the tool has some wear. Imagine that you have a car. If you have a car, you may say, okay, but I keep the maintenance of the car. Yes, for sure. But when you think about the car, the, the thing that moves the car, for example, let's think about the, the tires of a, a car, you need to change them eventually. So. Is a nib supposed to last forever in perfect condition? I'm not saying in writing condition, I'm saying in perfect condition. That is my thought. For how long should we expect that to be perfect? We have to think that nowadays pens don't have any longer the lifetime warranty. And even when they did, they eventually replaced your pen for another pen of the same kind, of, of the same range, because many times the same model was not around. So they would make some kind of other replacement. In this case, aren't we too harsh about this? I want to go through some other examples. I'm talking about wear. I'm not talking about some kind of pen failing. Because for me this is not really a fail and there are some failures that are understandable. For example, I have the Santini Libra, which is a beautiful pen that I showed you before, but I noticed that the plating on the gold nib is starting to flake off. So I contacted Santini, the pen was bought from them and they said immediately, yes, send me the old nib and we'll send you a new nib and better, instead of a gold nib 
rhodium plated, we will send you a white gold nib because we decided to change to to improve from rhodium plated gold nibs to white gold nibs and now there is no problem about platings anymore and it is easier so okay this is what I expect there was kind of a failure I have the pen for three four months so I would say this is it failed but they de they dealt with it in the good way so I think it's not a failure it is a, a problem with the material and they will replace it I am waiting for the replacement to arrive there is another pen in which something similar happened which was the Netuno and I'm only talking about Italian pens the Netuno 1911 black sand you have here a very ugly nib with the plating the black plating loss uh, or lost um, the, the, this is kind of ugly by the time um, when I got this when I got a replacement nib so I have a good nib to put here but because the nib came this is a bock nib and bock nibs are well known for some variation on its behavior sometimes you get a very good nib and a regular nib the other bock nib I have for this pen the new one the replacement one is a good nib but this one is amazing and I decided I want to keep this one even with this problem and I would say in this case this was a problem the pen this started to happen very soon after I got the pen so it's not even a, a use thing I think when you use something a lot it will wear your shirt will wear you need to change them your toothbrush they are tools that get old okay a toothbrush brush is not as expensive as a pen and you may hope a little better from a pen but the toothbrush will not will no longer work properly this one will still work properly and this one also they are they just don't look nice anymore but i agree this one was really a failure because it was too soon this one i think it's not but Again, what is your opinion about these? I have another example of a pen failure and I think this is very unacceptable and I'm talking about, this is a pen that I made a video and this, it was called a pen failure and in a way I'm a little bit done with Waterman unless sometimes I, sometime I find a Waterman Edison in a good uh, price but Waterman disappointed me a lot uh, I have this pen which was a special edition and look at the nib the nib is corroded it almost has a hole there a hole it's the black parts are corrosion they are not stained it the, the corrosion uh, is digging into the material this is a pen I asked uh, I many years later the, the pen was quietly and it was quietly in the drawer that it developed this kind of thing and then I asked Waterman for a replacement section for this pen they told me I needed to send them the pen and then they said okay it is a problem the pen is not under warranty but it is a problem and we know it is a materials problem so we will replace the nib not charging you for the nib but we will charge you for the work to be done and the work to be done on the pen was exact value of the nib and I asked if they were serious saying that and I said I didn't accept that and I received the pen like this it is a mess it is sad but I would accept better if they told me okay it was a problem the pen is not under warranty anymore we cannot offer you the nib but we will offer you the work and you have just to pay for the nib I would understand that it's hard for me to understand they will not pay me they will not give me uh, the time that they are you know the time that they would spend would be like this they had to go to a spare bin case pick a new section take out the, new, the older section put the new section in cap the pen put inside the box and send it to me and for them this is 40 
46 or 47 euros. So I didn't accept that. I think it's doesn't make it okay, but it's not a rant about water. I'm just saying this is pen failure to me. So how picky should we be about this? Again, is this acceptable for you? I have other examples. This one is kind of the use of the part of the pen that you really use. There are some other aspects of using a pen like this. I have this pen, the Pilot Sterling Carp, and I already have a little scratch there. I think you can see it on this band. So, maybe I was careless sometime, but I have to decide that I use the pen or I keep it. I decide to use it, so I need to accept this kind of problem. Or should I complain that the pen is not well made enough and it gets scratched like this, even being always inside the pouch? I'm, I'm not sure. If I buy a sterling silver pen, I know that sterling is silver is soft, so maybe I should accept that and not blame the pen, but maybe I can understand also who blames the pen. I'm just discussing the, the stuff, I'm not saying anyone is wrong or anyone is right. It's just that Waterman is wrong, <laughs> the other, otherwise no problem. So, this is something that comes with usage. Another thing is the Kavec Sport. This is my oldest Kavec Sport. I used it a lot. The, this is a Kavec Sport Blue Ice. The Blue Ice, uh, Ice Sport Blue. And even the Kavec Sport engraving there in silver lost all the silver because I used it a lot. It rubbed off. And people will say, but this is an EDC pen. It should stand that. But it is a 15, 17 euros pocket pen made of plastic, should it last forever, although it has, although it's meant to be used as a pocket pen, and it, it still lasts, it still work, it, it, it can still work. There is another thing people complain about Kavec Sport, is this, after some usage, when you cap and uncap, you will find this kind of, I'm not sure if I will be able to show you, there will be kind of uh, a dull portion there. I think you can see there is a part like here that is not as transparent because there's the place where the like that the cap goes round and touches the barrel. So you may say that is a design flaw, it shouldn't happen. And I can understand that better. But if you use a pen they this much, how long should you expect it to last? There are some other pens where I have this kind of idea. I have here the a Pilot Costume. Beautiful pen. And I was talking about white gold and I think this one is the, the one with the white gold nib. You can see there. White gold. Beautiful pen. Pilot Costume. Black stripes. And it posts and it posts beautifully. But then, you'll find there is the markings of the posting. Now, you were the one, or I was, or the previous owner, was the one who should never post the pen, or the pen was badly made or designed, and it does that. I have exactly the same thing in a... One of my favorite pens, the Parker 45, you can see by posting this end part that goes into the cap there, gets scratched there. It's kind of polished and the other part is matte. Should it happen? I'm not sure. That is why. I, I would say that this is a, why Parker at some time made this piece, different piece, that would not go it is uh, thinner, it will not go inside the cap that way, and it will not rub there, so it wouldn't have that problem. But that's it. Now, the Parker 45, some had this problem. I'm not sure if you will be able to see that. There is some distortion 
to the to the section. I think you can see that the reflection is not uniform. There is some distortion to the plastic and you may say that shouldn't happen. That is a problem of the pen. Yes, maybe, but this pen didn't have a lifetime warranty and this pen is from the 70s. Now what? Is How long should it last perfectly? And I have some other examples that I will show you. And some other examples are pens like this. This is a Parker Junior Dufold, almost 100 years old. And it should be jade green. It's not jade green anymore. It is brown, very heavily discolored. But, and the, the material is prone to cracking, this celluloid. But what do you think? Was this a problem? Yes, the material wasn't good enough, but they didn't know that at the time. So the pen would not last forever. I don't think there would be now a living person with uh, an original Parker Dufool that bought at still under lifetime warranty. But if it was, at some point they would say, oh, there's a problem with that, and they would replace it for the most recent model of the Parker will fold and so on. So this one should never last forever, indeed. And they didn't know that the material would discolor. Is this acceptable or not? Or is just acceptable in vintage pens? Or what is the time frame in which this stuff is acceptable? Then I have here another pen. This is a very famous one in my channel, I like it. This is a senator pen that I bought in the flea market very, very inexpensively. It has the gold plating almost all rubbed off and it, ha it has dings and so on. It is destroyed, so it is the fault of the user. They, they destroyed it, but was even the plating strong enough? Even if the owner didn't destroy it? And when you open the pen and you look at the nib, the nib has not that problem, but the gold plating is disappearing. So this is a flaw, but because it is an older pen, it is acceptable. The same thing goes for this Osmiroid 65. You see gold plating disappearing. Older pens, not that good quality, so it could happen. Yes, but when you are talking about your Pelican M200, this dark anthracite transparent. You see it has, it is losing the plating near the slit of the nib. Is this acceptable? It happened too early in the use of the pen and I didn't use it that much and it happened. I was a little sad but okay, it is a tool, it gets some wear, I could buy replacement nibs, it's still available. But there are other things that you may say that may be on, the, on between. In some pens like these, it is your usage of the pen. This is your usage of the pen. But there are pens in it's not the usage. I have this beautiful Waterman exception. The beautiful nib. This pen, I'm not sure if I can show this to you, it will not be easy, but if you look, okay, you can see. The tip of the clip has lots of pitting, it's losing the coating. This is a bad thing from Waterman, but when you look at that one, the nib on the yellow one, mm, we start thinking maybe this is a problem with the brand. This was not wear, because there is not wear, uh, it's, it's not scratch or anything, it's not wear, it's just the passage of time and maybe it's not so well done. So is this a part that was not physically destroyed by the use should wear like this or this one should be perfect still there even if you would assume some other details could not be that perfect anymore because they get some use? Question mark. Another thing that goes into be in between is this one. I have here, this is a beautiful, beautiful pen, the Parker Centennial Dufold 
olive check. I love this pen, very expensive pen as Parker Centennial Du Folds are. And you look at it, the nib is perfect, there's no problem with it, except there is some kind of dirt on the nib, sorry about that, but this nib is still perfect in the plating and so on, but look at this ring next there, the plating, I'm not sure if I can show that to you, but believe me, the plating on this ring next to the nib is falling. You may say, okay, that's clearly a design fault, because if you put some metal plated uh, ring next to the nib, something like that will happen. Maybe, maybe not, but I would say this, of course, this gets moist every day, and but it's not really the part with ink. Should, it, should that happen? Is that acceptable? Somehow, I find that less acceptable than the loose of plating there. I don't know if you understand me. So, I'm not saying anything bad about Leonardo. They will give me a spare nib to replace this one, even though this one works well. But maybe this is just the use. And should they... <laughs> of course I want a free nib, but should they give me a free nib, or should I expect to pay for a part of the pen that I used and it had use because of me? So, what are your thoughts about it? Finally, I just want to go through another pen that I don't have anymore and I don't ever wish to have it. It was the Twisby Diamond 340 that I had that completely broke. I used it for about one week when I got it, then I put it aside and when I got it, get, got to it some years later it broke completely. Cracked all over. So I don't have it anymore. That's a failure of the of the material, yes, for sure. That shouldn't happen with a pen that is just stored. It's not, not due to the use, but for how long should the pen be able to be there in good condition without being destroyed? When you're looking at the new materials today, we think it's easy to say, but when you look at this one, this one was destroyed. It's not in good condition but many years passed. So, how many years? How long? How much use? What are your thoughts about it? Or should a pen expensive like this never ever have a problem? So, this is my, these are my questions, but sometimes I think even a Rolls Royce may need some part replacement sometimes, and it is an expensive car. So, just my thoughts about this. Let me know what you think. I'm curious. I'm not saying... It's hard for me to say. I have my ideas about this. I think it is expected to happen something like that. So maybe if I don't, have, don't want that to happen, I should just choose one with a chrome trim that has the natural colors still need. So that may be the good the, the the best choice, but again, it is a failure. And most of all, I think the most important thing is how the brand deals with the problem. And I think they did the right thing. They will replace as the as Santini will do. So this is all I wanted to talk about today. I hope you enjoyed. The video got longer than I thought, as usually. This last part was very long and I went forth and back, but that's me. <laughs> Sorry about that. And when you don't speak English as your primary language, it's even harder to talk about without a complete script. 
So, this is all I had to show you today. I have to thank you a lot for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I wish you a wonderful weekend and we will meet again soon for another video. Bye!